hello guys welcome you to one more video so as you can see like the light is turning on and turning off so this is not an animation but yeah this is a device that I have programmed so as you see this is the main unit which is controlling this light so in today's video I will show you that how you can create a home automation relay switch using a very simple module and using this you can create a graphical user interface this is completely a web page that you see so in this video I will demonstrate it completely regarding this module and like how to interface this one and what to code and how to code so hope you guys will like this video so as you can see like uh, these are the device so this is a breakout board very simple a USB is over there so I connected these two wires so so that I can get power from this USB and I directly connected it to this one so the plus minus 5 volts so if you can see the module you see the VCC is the 5 volt the ground is the ground and NC COM and NO so which means normally connected common and normally open so that means as soon as you turn on the relay common and normally open these two terminals are connected so this acts as a switch and normally closed means when the relay is off automatically these two terminals are connected as soon as you power on the relay these two are opened up and these two gets connected so either you can turn on or turn off as you wish so it can operate in both the modes so here you see this is a reset switch we have over here if you press this one so you can reset the device and this is the ESP01 or like the ESP8266 and this can be plugged out from here and this is the device which is present over there and you can connect it using this jack and now if I do a size comparison then let me grab in my scale less than 4 centimeters in length and almost around two and a half centimeters in width and somewhat two centimeters in height so this is a very tiny little device if you do a comparison with my hand so it is less than two fingers as well you see it's a very tiny little device this much only it has been prepared so now let's see it in action so to make this device function so like uh, as you all know we need to program the ESP so I have written the code in the Arduino IDE and this particular IDE is very generic one so and very easy to write this works on the embedded C so this is the program that I have given and like this program written is a very lengthy one as you can see the line numbers so if I scroll down so approximately it's 636 lines of code so all together so each and every line is written by me because like I am good at embedded C writing and like electronic programming okay so this is the program that I already have and now let me show you the HTML page which I have developed so like uh, this is the index page that I have developed let me open it in notepad plus plus that would be wise yeah so this index page is written so if I scroll down and show you like uh, how many lines of code it is so it is a very short HTML page so approximately 396 lines of code that's it so what it does is like uh, this HTML has embedded CSS and JavaScript so the JavaScript uh, edits the elements and replaces the values which I received from the microcontroller from the Wi-Fi connection and this is how I have created the forms somewhat and like these are the timer modes and different modes that I have set and in short like I have uh, kept one image my company brand logo and all so this is how this HTML is created and what to do is like uh, we need to have the HTML and the RWeb logo inside the folder where you have the Arduino code so inside that you need to create a folder data and inside that you need to just uh, dump your HTML file and the logo and then like finally you can do the programming so I'll just show you how to program it so I have this uh, programmer with me so and like this ESP01 module so very simple you just need to plug this ESP01 module in this uh, jack and you just need to press it so once it is inserted properly very simple you need to connect it to the USB port so let me connect it 
you see as soon as I connect it automatically the laptop will sense the driver and then the COM port should be detected automatically if you can see like in my desktop like the COM port has been selected to COM port 5 and very simple like uh, you just need to click on the upload button so the programming that I did I have already compiled and verified it quite a lot many times so like uh, this is working very properly so let me just upload the code for you as you can see the code is already uploaded so here it is showing done uploading so now the programming is already done and now we need to remove it from usb so i unplugged it and then like uh, this esp01 you need to plug out and then you need to insert it into the relay module so now let me cleanse up my table and connect it to the relay module so as you can see my setup is ready so what i have done is like uh, this is my power wire so this wire has the terminals so the plug attached to it and from this plug I have taken one input to this relay into the common which is my line and via this switch I have given the line to this bulb or to the blue wire and the yellow wire directly goes over here so that means I will just cut off the line from this relay and then automatically the bulb will either turn on or turn off and similarly to power up this module what I have done is like I have attached this USB device with this one so this is simply a breakout board so that I can use my data cable and I can easily connect it and provide the power to this board so this is how this I will now connect this plug so I connected the plug and now I need to power up this ESP module so let me do that You will see a blue light is glowing on so that means the device has been powered up properly and you see like this LED starts blinking so this is a uh, significance for heartbeat so I have programmed it like that so as to understand whether the device is running properly or not this LED will continuously blink so that uh, you get to know like the device is running properly so this is a sort of a heartbeat or the pulse that I have denoted and now like we need to grab in our mobiles or the controlling devices from which we will control this relays. So as you all know like this device is Wi-Fi enabled and like this is a IoT smart relay. So what happens is like this ESP32 is connected to the Wi-Fi and it is as well connected with the internet and I have created those software and the code so that will create a web page inside this ESP8266 and that web page will be hosted in this particular IP so as soon as this device connects with your router automatically I have provided it with a static IP and the IP is 192.168.29.27 so automatically this device gets connected with the Wi-Fi and then static IP is assigned to it and whenever you will just hit that particular IP you will see the web page so I have already opened up the web page over here as you can see and similarly i have bookmarked that web page into my mobile so if i click this one so automatically that same page or the ip address will open up and if you see like as soon as the ip address opens up so it will give you a clear description like it's developed by drupjyoti rano made by rr technologies and like uh, the local address and i have my phone number over here it will say like to which Wi-Fi network it has been connected and what is the amount of signal that it is receiving from the Wi-Fi what is the device ID and what is the current time it is fetching from the internet and you see like this web page is hosted over here so both the information in both the devices are quite similar so this is the reason like uh, both the devices are operating in sync mode and that is the reason I have kept these two devices with you so that I can provide you a clear visibility that how this device works. Now what happens like as I have give, already given the power to this uh, particular bulb but it has been switched off by this relay so what I will do I will simply press on over here. So before I press so let me just uh, tell you how this entire uh, UI works is like we have three different modes is first the manual mode second is the timer mode and third one is the clock mode what does manual mode means it means like it is purely depending on your decision if you want to turn on you click on on 
as soon as you click on on button automatically this button turns off means the button appears to be off and if you click on off automatically the bulb will turn off timer mode if i click on the timer mode you see there is a on duration that means you can specify for how long the bulb will remain on and you can also specify for how long the bulb will remain off so you can specify the on duration as well as the off duration you can see it is mentioned in seconds so that means i have by default set it to 5 seconds on and 5 seconds off you see there is a green number written over here so this is the countdown that means as soon as the bulb is turned on automatically the countdown will begin 1 2 3 4 5 as soon as it goes 5 automatically the bulb will switch off and then the off countdown will begin that means the off will now start counting from 1 to 5 and then it will stop and just because i have provided these two fields so you did not enter same values over here so you can keep the bulb on for 10 seconds and off for 5 seconds whatever your choice might be so this is the timer mode that means it will work on the based of the setting that you have done for the time third mode is the clock mode that means you can set the start time that when the bulb should turn on based on the internet clock time that it is receiving so automatically it will turn on the bulb at that specific time and what will be the stop time automatically if you mention the stop time automatically the bulb will turn off in the provided time in this field so now let's see one by one in action so let's first click on the manual mode now the interesting part is like we can have multiple devices connected with internet at our home so now the question would be what happens if i just click on on over here you see if i press on automatically the bulb starts and the ui in this device also got changed as soon as if i click on off automatically you see this green led so that means this indicates your bulb is on now and here it is also showing as on if i press off here so automatically this one will turn red as well as this device will also turn red because this entire both the pages are getting served from this esp so let me press off you see both the devices are turning red so now let's assume like i went to timer this page is in manual mode but i went into timer mode and i set it to 5 5 seconds and then you see the button is written start processing if i click on start processing automatically the ui in this ipad will also change if i click on start processing you see the ui in this ipad also got changed and automatically you see now the countdown began for the off 2 3 4 5 and then it will again turn on and the on countdown will begin so it's very simple and it will work in loops like this and automatically these things will happen the best part is once you are already into a mode and it is running nobody else can control it like for example if i click on manual it won't work if i click on clock it won't work neither from any of the device it won't work until and unless you exit out from this mode so first you need to press stop as soon as you press stop you see again the button name changed to start processing and now these buttons are enabled you can switch into these buttons but if you as soon as you press start from anywhere these buttons get disabled in every ui so irrespective if you have 10 devices connected at your home you need not worry that if you turn on the bulb somebody else can turn it off yeah somebody else can turn it off only in the case of the manual mode but yeah like the question would be if i turn on the timer can anybody else turn off the timer yeah definitely so like for example this timer is currently on and i want to stop the processing so if i click stop processing over here so automatically you see both the device again in sync and the processing has been stopped so that means both the device can independently communicate with the esp and esp will provide the same information to both the devices so there will be no disparity between both the devices and their decisions so this is how this device has been made so now let me show you like uh, the third mode which is the clock mode so for that let me do one thing i'll just lock my screen and let's see the time 
so right now it's 11:3. so now i'll go to the clock bar here if i click on the time let's assume 11 5 so you see i entered the time as 11 5 pm and it will turn on at this time and now let me set the stop time 11 So that means I'll start on the LED or the bulb from 11.5 and it will automatically stop at 11.6 and if you see right now the time is 11.430. So now let me start the processing. So as soon as I click on start processing you see the button appeared as stop processing. And now let me open the clock for you. You see it's 11.4 as soon as it will enter 11.5 automatically the bulb will turn on. And that's the interesting part. The reason is this device is connected to internet and it is fetching the time from the internet directly. So there is no problem for the time mismatch. You see, 11.5 and the bulb got turned off. And automatically, very simple, when it will cross 11.6, automatically that bulb will again turn off. And it is very accurate and very precise that you will not miss out any time or any second. So this has been programmed so precisely that it will not provide you any errors as you see 6 and automatically the bulb turned off so this is how this device works so now let me show you like from where did i bought these items so as you can see like i generally prefer quartz components so this is not a sponsored video like i generally personally like this website the reason is they provide cheap components and like quick deliveries and is up to the mark in terms of quality and all so you can see like the relay module which I showed you so is available only for 89 rupees that's excluding GST so at max it will cost you something around 100 rupees. So in this yellow jack you need to plug in the ESP01 or the 8266 so this module so as you can see this module comes for 93 rupees so this is somewhat equivalent to 100 rupees as well. And lastly like to program that module you need a programmer for this one so this will again cost to 96 rupees so almost around three components are needed and all of them are somewhat around 100 rupees so 300 in total and like as you know like this particular module has a power and connector so if you look into this one like the 5 volt so for this one generally we use the usb so the usb such type of a jack is also easily available that uh, you can plug in your adapter over here and from here you get two wires and you can plug in those two wires into the module so that the module gets the power so this cost you around 6 rupees so altogether everything gets wrapped up within 300 rupees approximately and like the benefit from quartz component is like you get free shipping of up to 150 rupees only so from this website i bought these items and i made this device and how much immense powerful this device is I just gave you an example so my point is like if you want to do such kind of automations at home and you are like DIY hobbyist and you know embedded C programming or like electronics programming little bit being an amateur as well so that's not a problem you can easily try these things out at home there are n number of stuffs and information available over the internet you can easily grab such kind of videos go through the blogs and there will be definitely n number of example codes that will be available and you can use them and make up your own devices very interesting and helpful so hope you guys like this video thanks for watching bye bye